So before I start this video, I just want to say, please follow my Instagram. I have like all my art posted there. I'm trying to get back on track on posting. Um, mainly you'll find original art or comics. Uh, but anyway, please do. That would be so cool. And I want more like people to interact with my stuff. So yeah. So hey guys, it's Joe. I've had this idea for a video for a while, but I didn't have a recording a video like speed paint for the video or anything and finally i like drew this random art of kazuma kiryu and majima goro from the video game yakuza and it kind of tied in with the story of today's video so i was like hey why not like i'll, I'll have that like me coloring that in the background and i'll talk to you guys about my obsessions because that's something everyone talks about okay I've always been an obsessive person. Like, if I get an interest in something, it's pretty, pretty bad. Like, I, I get so into that thing that nothing can draw me away from it. As a lot of people who are watching this video will know about one thing that will be mentioned. Oh, I might have to make a part two or its own video for that. But anyway, uh, I guess I'll start at my first real obsession that I had. And that was when I was roughly 12 or 13 and I got obsessed with the musical The Book of Mormon and even today I remember every single lyric to every single song I am Africa I still own the book I own the soundtrack but it got lost and I don't know where it is so I have it downloaded to my tablet instead because I still have a lot of nostalgia with it and the music but I was obsessed with it like so much back then I tried getting tickets I tried convincing my mom to get tickets I saved up a thousand dollars from a part-time job I had over the summer just to be able to get tickets and that kind of went out of hand so that kind of sucked because when Andrew Rennells ended up leaving I decided I didn't want to see it anymore because what was the point my idol like my favorite person in the world was gone <laughs> there was no point anymore i still really hope to see it someday though because it was a really good musical and i wish to see it live someday even if it's not on broadway with andrew rannells but and either way i'm sure it'll be amazing also i tried auditioning to be elder price but i knew that if i tried to do that back then that would not have worked out I still tried. <laughs> uh, okay, my next obsession was one of my longest and most severe, and everyone gives me shit for it, even to this day. And that is my obsession with Italia. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Oh, oh God. Italia was so bad. It was the worst but best obsession ever. My friend actually asked me to check it out because she wanted to talk about it with me. And I remember I kept like holding it off because I was like, yeah, whatever, like not my thing. Because I was like, uh, it's like short skits. Okay, I don't understand. Why is this popular? Why is this a thing? Is it for the gays? And then like, I don't know. I was in a really bad spot in my life. A bunch of shit went down. I was in the care of CPS and I chose to check it out. And so honestly, if I have to be completely real here, Italia got me through some of the worst moments of my life because when I got into it, there was like a lot of shit going on. I was moving from foster home to foster home and treatment facility to treatment facility. And just the fact that I had the manga of Hitalia, my therapist used to print out a bunch of like notes about it that I put in this notebook. If I find it, I'll like flip through it on screen because I remember like cherishing that like it was my life and that's why it's so beat up. But it really got me through some of the hardest shit. Like I got 4.0 grade point averages because of it. I tried harder at life. I tried harder at school. I tried harder just to be better as a person because I really respected the characters. This doesn't even make sense, but it's so weird. Like once you have that kind of like connection to something, it's really hard to just explain it. Like it got me through some really bad parts of my life. It stuck with me for six years. I'm finally getting over it, but I still, I still, I can't, 
get over it sometimes. I even sit here and still sometimes read fan fiction. And I sometimes just go back to episodes and just laugh or read doujinshis or look at fan art because it was such a great show. And Italy was my life. And Jurita was my life. And I think Hitalia, in a way, had something to do. There's a cat on my desk. Beaches. I think Hitalia, for the most part, just made me get through all that. I feel like if I didn't have it through that time period, I would have been in a lot worse place because I would have had nothing to end the day with. I would have had nothing to look back upon. I just, I need to make a whole, like, its own video for this. I've seen a few other YouTubers do it too because Italia is just really, it's helped a lot of people through hard times. And I think that's amazing. And that's probably what brings the whole community together is that. And I'll see if I can draw like a piece of fan art or something and make a video about that because this is, this honestly, this six years of my life deserves its own video that's done in a respectful, caring way and not comedic because Italia was amazing and Jurita was my life. The next obsession I remember was Osamatsu-san and this one was like really heavy more so in the fact that I got so invested into it as a fan. Like I bought a shit ton of merchandise, figurines and a uh, book case and stuff i drew so much fan art for it but it was all based off other people's fan art so credit is where credits do if i could find all these referenced images i didn't understand referencing back then very well and that's still all in a folder i remember i'd watch like the first season over and over and over and i still haven't gotten the chance to watch season two even though i know i still want to go back to that because also, Matsu-san really got me into yaoi doujinshis as a whole. And I continually like look at doujinshis of it, see what's new, see what people have translated. Because I, I don't know, it just really got me into that gay shit. That gay in <laughs> shit that I'm gonna get demonetized. <laughs> oh my gosh, like, I don't know. Kara Ichi is life. Osomatsu is like, it just wasn't as extreme as Italia, but I would walk around town singing the songs, like whatever there was of the songs, like there's talking and shit. <laughs> and I, I don't know, I just loved it. I even watched like the original for a while of what was translated, but I never really got into that. I liked the new one. But I think I actually honestly tried watching episode one of season two and I just couldn't get into it, but maybe because I haven't invested myself into it for a while, so maybe that's all I need to do is just watch season one again and just relive good memories and try to make new better memories with season two. So yeah. <laughs> so I think that brings me to my latest obsession, which is the Yakuza games. And this only started like probably a month ago, but I'm already like hella obsessed. Like, come on, look at, <laughs> look at Majima. How can you not love that face? He is my spirit animal in human form. I adore him. There is no one else that is more like me that I can explain. Look at this gym. Oh God, I fucking love it. <laughs> Kazumaji is life. That's why this fan art is Kazumaji. Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm fanning out over here. Whatever the word is. But no, the games are really fucking good. Like, oh, I just, oh, I've been playing it nonstop for like days. Yesterday, I played it all day. I have like 50 hours invested into the game. Someone please save me and I'm not even, even done with it. I've just been doing side missions and just walking and walking and walking and walking and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and leveling up and being overpowered before I'm supposed to. But I'm on chapter 11 now and I'm almost done. And it's so satisfying. I love the story. I even bought the second game because I need to play it as soon as I finish the first because I'm going to be invested again for weeks. And then they have the three, four and five for ps4 now that i also need to buy but i haven't been able to because money is a problem and i need it oh i love the games and it all happened because my friend had to post a meme about a part in the third game i think it's the third game where there is transgender representation and i'm so happy i love it i love rena the the hostess Carberry girl or whatever who's lesbian and Kiryu is too pure and kind for this world. I love it. I love it. Ah, oh, I don't know how long this obsession is gonna last, but I just I just love it so much. <laughs> 
I, I just, I don't obsess like that often on like Facebook or anything. So I need a place to get it out. And I don't ever draw fan art really. I hate fan art because I'm afraid like, oh, I'm gonna post this and someone's gonna say, hey, that's not a legitimate representation. Ah, and I just had to do this. And I'm probably gonna regret it later because a lot of people are probably gonna hate it. I don't know. I get so nervous posting fan art. I don't do fan art. I'm not a fan art person. I draw original stuff because I don't want people getting mad at me like, you're shipping this that's wrong or you drew this wrong and I just don't need that in my life. But maybe I should grow some balls. Anyway, I hope you like this video. It was just an excuse to be able to ramble about some things that kind of make my heart happy or did or still do or kind of still do however you want to interpret it uh i uh i'll try to make more videos because with all this corona out there it's a good time to stay indoors and make videos and have a good time so wash your hands stay clean don't overstock on toilet paper and i'll talk to you later bye